Determine the value of 2 to the power of 4 times 1, o 1 plus 1 half, 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2 to the power of 3, and 1 over 2 to the power of 4. If you just multiply through, you'll get 2 to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 1, and then finally just 1. And this is 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And when you add all those numbers up, you get 31. Four years ago, Daryl was three times as old as Joe was. In five years, Daryl will be twice as old as Joe will be. How old is Daryl now? So we have to set up the math here. So four years ago, so D minus 4 was equal to three times J minus 4, where D and J represent Daryl and Joe's age. So this is my first equation. Second equation is five years from now, so d plus five is equal to two times j plus five. And we just need to solve those two, so let's see what happens. d minus four is three j minus 12, therefore d, d is equal to three j minus eight. And then this next equation, d plus five is two j plus 10, and therefore d is equal to 2j plus 5. And then I guess set these two equal to each other. So 3j, uh, let's see here. Yeah, 3j minus 8 is equal to 2j plus 5. And therefore j is equal to 13. And we can substitute that 13 into any one of these. And that would be with 39 minus 8 is 31. So the answer to this question, how old is Daryl now, is 31 years old. A die is a cube with its faces numbered 1 through 6. One red die and one blue die are rolled. The sum of the numbers on the top of the two faces is determined. What is the probability that the sum is a perfect square? Probability questions, a numerator and denominator. The denominator is the total. And the numerator is our specific condition. Now, what is the total? Let's do that first. Each die has six possible outcomes, one through six. So six possible outcomes for this red die and six for the blue. And then the total, you'd have to multiply. So 36 is the total number of, of uh, uh, outcomes when you roll the die. So that goes here. That's the total. Now, our specific condition is that the sum, very important that you remember it's sum, not product, of the top two numbers must be a perfect square. Okay, what are, what are the perfect squares? We have 1 squared, which is 1, 2 squared, which is 4, 3 squared, which is 9, 4 squared, which is 16, and I think we don't need to go any farther because, first of all, what's the maximum sum you could get? You could get a 6 and a 6, right? And that sum would be 12. So you're never going to get ha higher than a 12. So we don't need to worry about that 4 squared. Um, I think just these three will be sufficient. Well, 1 we can't get because the, to get a 1, you'd have to get 1 on, let's say, the red die and then a 0 on the blue die. But there is no such thing as a 0. So this one's out. But I think I can get a 4. The 4 is possible. Uh, 1 and 3, if th that's the outcome of the 2 die. Dice. Uh, 2 and 2 and 3 and 1. And then f to get a 9, let's see, 3 and 6 would do it. 4 and 5, 5 and 4, and 6 and 3. So these are the ones that will give you a sum. Uh, that is a perfect square, and there are 7 of those guys, so 7 goes over there. And that is my probability. Determine the number of positive divisors of 1, 8, Eight zero zero that are divisible by two three five. So the divisor, let's say, is x. If you divide it by, it's divisible by two three five. That's the first condition. And it's obviously a divisor of uh, eighteen hundred eighteen eight eight zero. So eighteen eight zero zero is divisible by x. So that basically means that x is of the form 
2, 3, 5, because this has to be some integer, right? Let's just call it n. So x is of the form 2, 3, 5 times n. Yeah, all, all the divisors of 18800 0, 0, that are also divisible by 2, 3, 5. Now, to help us figure out what this n will be, we need to just take this 18800 0, 0, and divide it by 2, 3, 5 to see what is left over. And what is left over is 80. So, basically what this question is saying is, what are the divisors of 80? Divisors of 80. And whatever they are, you just tag them along with this n. So, for example, the divisors of 80, I believe, are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 16, 20, 40, and 80. So, every x will be of that form so it'll be 235 times 1 or 235 times uh, 2 or 235 times 4 and so on you guys get the point all the way down to 235 times 80 and those are basically the the, the positive divisors of 18800 0, 0 that are also divisible by 235 and how many are there well there's going to be one for each of these guys and there's 10 of those so there's 10 of them In the diagram, the circle has center O, OF is perpendicular to DC at F and is perpendicular to AB at E. If AB is 8, DC is 6, and EF is 1, determine the radius of the circle. Let's set this up. Uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, the first thing, of course, I, I think is to draw some lines. So I'm going to draw one line from A to O, and another line from B to O. So those two lines represent the radii. And let's label them. So I'll put the R here. And then let's see here. The AB segment is 8, right? So that means AE is 4. So let's just squeeze in a 4 there. DC is 6, so that means DF is 3. Since the line that is coming from O to E and F is perpendicular, it'll chop those two chords in half. And then EF is 1. Okay, and then OE I'll just call X for now. So now let's set this up from the triangle uh, AEO, from that guy, we'll get a Pythagorean relationship of 4 squared plus x squared is r squared, right? And then from the triangle DFO, that guy, we get 3 squared plus 1 plus x squared is r squared. I believe that's correct. So now let's solve this, I guess. Since this equals this and r squared also equals that, we can set those equal to each other. So we have 16 plus x squared is 9. And let's expand that 1 plus 2x plus x squared. And therefore, we have 6 is equal to 2x, and therefore x is equal to 3. And then to get r, we can just substitute it back into any of those guys. So that would be, let's see here, 16 plus 3 squared, which is 9, is r squared. And therefore, r would just be 5. And 5 is the radius of the circle. In a magic square, the numbers in each row, the numbers in each column, and the numbers in each diagonal have the same sum. Given the magic square shows a, b, c, x, y, z, all greater than 0, determine the product x, y, z in terms of a, b, c. Well, um many approaches here I'm, I'm trying to think which approach is correct let's uh let's just go with um hmm. let's go the top row that's going to be the log of a plus the log of b plus the log of x and that is equal to the standard sum uh, whatever that sum is we can let that sum be s if we wanted to and then that's going to equal something else so Let's go with the diagonal, the, the diagonal that's going from here to here. And that's going to be log of z plus the log of y and then plus the log of x. I believe that is right. Okay, now using log rules, this is going to be log of a, b, c is equal to the log of x, y, z. Oh, sorry, not a, b, c. Uh, a, b, x. Sorry about that. Got a little 
ahead of myself. So log of x, y, z. Yeah. Okay. So that basically means that ABC, ABX is equal to x, y, z. And therefore, AB is equal to y, z. Yeah. And then I guess we can isolate for any of these if you wanted to like that. And let's see what that does later on. Okay, so let's move right along. We got z in terms of something. Let's let's see if we can get x and y in terms of something, and then let's see if we combine them and what happens. Okay, so uh, where where do we go next here? Um, hmm. uh, a y and r. Let's let's go the other diagonal. So we have the log of a plus the log of y plus the log of or just, just R, I guess, just R, and that's going to be equal to some other, uh, some other, let's try the, the X, C, and R, X, C, and R, the, the third column, top to bottom, so it's going to be the log of X plus the log of C plus R, so this is going to be using log rules again, A, Y is equal to the log of, uh, sorry, this should have been a C in there, log of xc, I believe, right? So that means ay is equal to xc. So isolating for x, we get ay over c. Okay, so far so good. We now have to do the same kind of thing for y. Uh, let's see here, a, p, and z. Let's use the first column. So the log of a plus p plus the log of z. And what's the other guy we're going to use? We can use the second row. So P plus the log of uh, Y plus the log of C. Yeah. Okay, so the P's cancel, and then you just get using log rules A and Z is equal to the log of Y and C. So therefore, AZ is equal to YC, and therefore, Y is equal to AZ over C. All right, so now I guess we can combine it. Uh, we want... X, Y, Z in terms of A, B, C. So let's see what we get. X, Y, Z. Okay, so X is this guy. So A, Y over C. Y is this, so that'll be A, Z over C. And Z is this, so that's going to be A, B over Y. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, combining this, we get A to the power of 3. The Y's cancel, interestingly. We just have this B, and then we have a Z, and then we have C squared. Okay. Well, that's pretty good, but we still have that Z in there. So I guess I, hmm, what do I do now? I still got a Z in there. Hmm. Um, hmm. I think I have to do a little bit more algebra then to figure out what Z is. Z is A, B over Y, and then Y over here is a z over c so this is going to be a b over one times c over a z and then this means that z is b c over z and then that means z squared is b c and therefore z would be b to the half c to the half like that okay uh, then I guess I sub that into there. So a to the power of 3, b, b to the half, c to the half, all over c squared. Okay, oh, that's good. Now I just have a, b, c's. Let's combine all this. a to the power of 3, b to the 3 over 2, and that's all going to be over c to the 3 over 2, I believe. And there you go. You got x, y, z in terms of just a, b, c.